right. as well. Go we ahead. are uh, we are actually live right now, guys. This is super ugly show <laughs> Tuesday, seven thirty. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, here we go. Go ahead, Rock. No, no, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, hey, guys. All right. Um, if everyone hasn't heard, we lost a very, very dear friend of the Super Ugly Show over the weekend. Chef Carl Ruiz passed away very, very sadly. Uh, honestly, like when I heard the news, I was gutted. And uh, tonight's episode is going to be dedicated to Chef Carl Ruiz. We love you, buddy. No, but what? What makes Doctor Who so special? Like, why is it on for like a hundred years? Nerds, and... it's nerds. Right. It's just, it's just nerds. There's, let me tell you, I'm in New York all day now. I, I, I have a restaurant right next to the Google Building. The nerds took over, bro. It's over. The nerds yeah. took over. What's the, once it was cool to be a nerd, we lost everything. Yeah. That show's been right. on for like fifty years yeah. now, or some shit. Dude, we lost been like... everything. They're all fucking with their little inside jokes and online to buy a new <laughs> electronic toy and shit. I fucking see them snickering at us, Carl. <laughs> They fucking, they, they stare at me the whole fucking time. You know what I mean? They're just nerds. They're fucking, they cry with their girlfriends at the same time. It's a mess. It's a mess out here. A mess. Uh, yeah, I don't I, know. I'm on a subway all day watching guys just get yelled at. The whole, sit down. Sit down. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Remember when, like, you'd be scared on the subway because, like, someone might stab you? You know, yeah. now someone might record you doing something. It's like, fuck, man, just leave me alone. Yeah, like I'm fucking, <laughs> man, and all the nerds are fucking talking nerd shit with each other. Oh, I got the new Iron Man doll. Oh, look at my, <laughs> look at my Xanos fucking glove. I'm like, get the fuck, you're 40, bro. I'm going to punch you to death with your fucking glove. How about that? <laughs> oh, my the God. Mess, that would be great. Could you imagine like, that? Look, See I, Carl I, on the subway the just guy. with a Thanos glove on, smashing some guy in the face with it? <laughs> Cause I was coming, I was in the subway. I was, I was behind this guy. He had like cartoon pins on his backpack. I was enraged. I was. In, I couldn't even fucking get off the platform. I was shaking. Did you watch Game of Thrones? Oh, I'm, I lost my virginity years ago. Okay, <laughs> now see. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all the Games of Thrones people right now are pissed at Carl. That's well, you can't be. He passed away, so you have to be nice. But uh, that was just a little clip from uh, the last appearance Carl had on our show. Uh, if you guys listen to this show, he's been on countless times at this point. I can't even. Yeah, I, I, yeah he's been on a lot. Um, I met Carl one time. We found out about Carl through Opie's radio show originally, his last satellite show that he was doing. It was him, Carl, uh, Sherrod, Vic Henley a lot, and then a few other people, Christy Stefano, and uh, like I said, a few other people. But Carl was the one that stood out. Like, Carl was just so fucking funny, dude. Just so fucking funny. So one day we reached out to him on Twitter, like I always do with everybody, and he decided, hey, yeah, I'll come on the show. And he, like every guest does, I got like five minutes I can give you. Yeah. First time. They he, always. Yeah, everybody, they got five minutes yeah. until they get on with us. And then. He why, was, why are we getting off so soon? Yeah, then he was on the whole show. but uh, And then again, countless times. But me and uh, Jess actually went out to one of his restaurants. Not the, the last one he opened, but one of them. And, I mean, he couldn't have been nicer. He couldn't have been, like, welcomed us like we were fucking family. Fed us crazy. Wouldn't accept money. Like, I was, I was like, demanding he took it. Wouldn't accept it. Jess wanted a glass of wine. She didn't know they didn't serve wine there. So uh, as with the foods coming, he's like, oh, you guys want anything to drink? She's like, oh, do you have any red wine? And he's like, no, we don't here. He's like, you know what? Hang out. I'll be right back. Went out wherever, somewhere, and went and got Jess a sick, but not like a cheap shit bottle of wine, like yeah. a, a really fucking nice bottle of wine. Went out, got it, you know, sat with us the whole time, laughing, joking. We had a great fucking time. And then, uh, you know, ever since then, we kind of had like this r relationship with him. Because we would talk to him via text, and he would randomly call us at night. Like, it would be 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, and he knew we were up because we were always up with night owls. And he would just randomly call us. He'd be drunk, you know. Rock, Jess! What are you guys doing? <laughs> you know? We'd be like, nothing, Carl, what's up? Like, we'd be stunned. We'd be like, what the fuck? Carl's called us. This is pretty cool, you know? <laughs> but, uh, and, like, we became close with him just through, you know, Twitter and Instagram, and then, you know, we exchanged numbers, and we were able to talk via text. He actually yelled at us. He's like, stop hitting me up on Twitter. He's like, you have my numbers. Just use my number. Yeah. So, uh, we would be, like, we would be just be doing a show, and I don't know way he would just call in. He would just randomly call in. Um, yeah, it's... And everyone yeah. that talks to him says the same thing. You immediately felt like 
you were like known him forever. Like he always made everyone comfortable, and he's so easy to talk to, and he made everybody fucking laugh. He was such a genuine, nice fucking guy. Yeah. Like he really was. And everyone's sitting in like, oh, he ate like shit, and he drank, and he didn't eat like shit for one. For the people who don't know, Carl didn't eat literally everything that he was picturing. So when he would picture the foods on his Instagram, he would take like a bite or two of it and then be done with it. He's not sitting there and eating fucking, you know, well, I don't even know. He would have plates of, in front of him and whatever it is, whether he was at McDonald's or he was at fucking Peter Lugas. What did he, he always, I always checked his, what I mean, Peter Lugas, he's going to eat a whole steak. But, you know, when he's at McDonald's and you see nuggets and a Big Mac and apple pies and cookies and he doesn't eat everything. He'll take bites of it and then just be done with it. So, like, you know, everyone's like, he ate like shit, really? If you look at him two years ago and you look at him, the last picture he took, the guy dropped, like, 50 pounds. Yeah, he was. He looked like he was in doubt. He, he was in he much like better that. shape than he was when I first met Carl. You know, so I don't know what everyone's talking about with the eating thing. You know, everyone eats a certain way. It's well, just, you know. Right, but he's got he's to eat different stuff for the show, too. You know? Yeah. So. And, and with heart attacks, like, those things can just come up out of nowhere. They really can. Like, we've talked about it with my, my wife's father. He completely fit. Yeah. Didn't drink, do drugs, smoke, nothing. He was actually doing a karate. Um, he was earning test. a black belt test. And yeah. once he finished it, got the black belt. He did get his belt. And then passed out at the test. Really? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. You know, fell out at the test and uh, was pretty much pronounced dead right there. That's fucking horrible. Man. Yeah, well, the, the, everyone okay. was there. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, it was terrible. Like, it was terrible, but bad. It, it just it's it sucks when you lose someone like this, and and you could see the outpouring for this guy. Like if you go on Facebook and you go on Instagram and you go on um, yeah. Twitter and you just put in hashtag Ruizing, it is endless stuff of people just showing love for carl like it really is he was everywhere he was on fucking cnn he was on fox like th this was i i didn't think it would be as big as it was to be honest with you well i think like the the normal like the normal person he gravitated to like because just look at us like he, regular people just regular people he was like dude every instagram video is him at some fucking dive bar yeah you know dancing drinking and pinkies up by the way if you're drinking tonight pinkies up in, in memory of carl yeah. but um always dancing drinking having a good time that fucking laugh down the earth you know that laugh he does that yeah. ah, ha, ha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking amazing and it, it like it, you really don't even know what to say when you when you lose someone like that because he was such an awesome guy. You would see he'd reach out to every fan, every fucking person he would interact with. Yeah. He he was just such a great dude. It's such a fucking huge loss. It really is. And and I look and of course me and Jess were supposed to go there on my birthday. We ended up not going. And now of course we're both like you fucking assholes. Yeah. You fucking assholes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you were supposed. We you guys were supposed to go there. I you guys you were telling me that. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah. And we fucking didn't. We were just like ah, you know, we'll go another time. And then yeah, you now there is no other time. So like th that's the main thing I want to get out of that. Like when you say we'll go another time, there might not be another time. Do that shit now. Yeah. Do it now. Don't put it off today. Yeah. Because honestly, like, I would have loved to have seen Carl. And now I can't no more. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. Fuck. And then you think of, like, someone like Opie, who's doing his podcast. Carl was kind of the right-hand man of it. And he's getting his feet back, you know, and it's, and now he loses his partner. And it's like, motherfucker, man. Like, that is, you got to think what that fucking guy's going through. After all this shit he went through. Yeah. With everything else, now you know he loses the guy he he was doing it with again. It sucks. Did, what did they um? Did he have a show, Opie? Or? He's got his podcast going. Well, did they did they have an episode yet? With oh no! Oh, do you mean has he done? He aired something yesterday, but it wasn't really anything directly about Carl. It was it was and it wasn't. Well, explain what it was. Uh, well, today actually, was it today he posted it? There was another one he posted. Shit. I was listening to one today where it was a Alex Garnaschelli and uh, Guy Fieri, and I'm pretty sure this was from the Satellite show where they were all just breaking Carl's balls. They came in, and it's like an hour and a half podcast of them just breaking fucking Carl's balls. It's really funny. Yeah. Really funny. And then the, what was the one the other day? 
I listened to it too. I'm fucking blanking on it. Ah, shit. Oh, it was Opie walking around the city. So no, it wasn't anything like that. But at the end, there was something kind of mentioned. That's what it was. So, <clears throat> but, you know, it, it, it's a huge loss. It is. It's a huge loss for a lot of people. Um, and uh, we here at the Super Ugly Show, of course, send condolences to Carl's family and uh, anyone who Carl impacted, you know, because we, we feel it too over here. It, it was shitty. It was shitty. Someone put out that tribute video. Did you see that one video? Yeah, that was really nice. Ah, it made me fucking tear up like yeah. a fucking, like a baby. Yeah, it was, it was really nice, the, what, you know, what, what kind of effort they put into it, and, you know. It was good. Yeah. It was good. I'm not even kidding. I started tearing up at the end. I was like, you son of a bitch. Mm. But it was nice. So, on to, uh... No, the, not even on, on to uh, Sid Haig. I know, no, that's what I was, I'm going to say, on to even more the, sad what news. What the hell, man? I wake up Sunday morning after the, all the Carl. No, yesterday, right? It was announced. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday morning I wake up, and uh, Sid Egg died on Sunday night. So I'm like, well, fuck this weekend. Like, just the worst fucking weekend ever. Fucking Carl dies, and then Captain Spaulding dies. I'm like, you yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Now, John, you uh, you familiar with Sid Haig? And I know he's in like you know horror movies and shit. You don't. Really, he don't no. You've never seen Devil's Rejects or no, House I of a Thousand Corpses. A thousand Corpses. You, you corpses. don't recognize this cat? No, I know. I, I know. What, I know what he was. Okay. He was fucking eighty years old though. Yeah, he he had what? a good run. He well, had a good run. I mean, eighty is not that old, but it's old. And you know what? What's fitting? His last on-screen role or filmed role was Captain Spaulding. Yeah. So. I, I think that's really fitting because that was a character that really brought him really to the forefront to begin with. I mean, he wasn't the biggest yeah. of stars to begin with. Did, so. they say, did they say how he died? Oh, I don't, he was sick with something. Rob yeah. Zombie had wrote something, and, and he, he was, was sick, sick with for something. A while. Yeah. And um, I guess that's why he, he wasn't going to do the movie. Yeah, but know? they got him for the one scene. Yeah, they got him for the scene, but he couldn't. <sighs> I guess he was sick to the point where he couldn't do the movie. So. And you know what? Now that the, I... I I realize all of this and the rushed death that it seemed like. Yeah. Um, now I go, uh, all right. Yeah, you had to do it. You, you had to. Yeah. You, you Well, you're not going to film a movie when he can't yeah. work. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just it, it sucks. But, you know, with, with celebrity deaths like that where I don't know the guy, yeah, it sucks. But I got the best out of him at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like he was going to be doing more groundbreaking shit. No, no. So he had a good run. God bless him. Thank you for your work. You yeah. know, good job. Yeah, absolutely. I adore Captain Spoiler. One of my favorite, if not, no, not. It's one of my favorite horror characters of all time. Well, it's not really horror, but okay. Thousands of a Thousand Corpses is absolutely oh, horror. Well, it is, but yeah, that's Devil, where he Devil's Rejects. He was introduced to us from House of a Thousand Corpses, Rich. Okay. Yeah. You know, to be fair, we have to credit that movie for Captain Spaulding, not Devil's Rejects. Yeah, and he was the bartender in Kill Bill. Yes, yes, and he was in uh, Jackie Brown also. He was. Yeah. What part? I don't remember. I just know he was in it. I remember. The, I like Jackie Brown. That's a I, good movie. That's the one. Tar it's probably my least favorite Tarantino movie. Um. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I could see it. Yeah. I only watched it at once fully, probably. But it's still not a bad movie. It's not a bad movie. It's just I have no reason to ever go back and watch it. It's not Tarantino-like. I, I watch it. It's I very back, different yeah, from I his movies. I go back movies. and watch it once in a while. Yeah. Like once every two years, I'll watch it. Like even the dialogue's not there the way it is with yeah, the rest of them. but it's, I don't know, it's a pretty cool, you know, to have with the money and the whole thing. And I don't know, it's just pretty, it's pretty cool. I, I like it. Do you like his new movie? Who? Tarantino. I, 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 I loved didn't it. watch it yet. I loved it. Did you see it yet? No. When um, they like the. Um, I don't. Fuck. I don't think. Um. I haven't really. <laughs> you haven't really said much about it, and you don't really praise it ever. Because I need to see it again. Okay. I can't watch any movie. I don't take. I don't remember a movie first time. I'm so into the movie yeah. that I'm not actually collecting it. I'm just watching and enjoying. You know, I'm not sitting there going, "Ooh, remember that does part." It, does it have top five? Um, of, of Quentin Tarantino's movies, in, in, is it in the top five? In my opinion, yes. Stop. For me, yes. Yeah, for you. Because, you know, you got Pulp, Reservoir Dogs. Kill um, Bill. 
Mm. No, it's it's better than Kill Bill to then. I think it's, to me it's it's better than Kill Bill. I'd wow. rather watch that than Kill Bill. Wow. Because I'm not an action hound. While I do like action, I'm not a, like a sucker for it. You're more of a sucker for action. Yeah. You know where I'm not. So uh, I I don't get me wrong. I love Kill Bill. It's not putting it down, but I would probably watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood over Kill Bill. And what was the deal with like the Bruce Lee thing when they were like? They, like, uh, they were all upset because they made him look like a dick and you know whatever it, it's a fiction it's a fictional fucking movie yeah. like uh, it's not there's yes there's real people in it but it's fictional yeah. so it was whatever the uh, area 51 thing was a bust do you even want to talk about that yeah yeah so um wait was it did a hundred people show up or a thousand people there was a lot of people there but it wasn't you know, not a lot. I mean, it was, you know, a did decent try, amount. Did they try bum-rushing it? No, I think I saw a video of one guy, like, at the gate getting arrested, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> He's the idiot. They're like, yeah, Bill, you go. You're good. You got you know, this. We'll, we'll go at the same time, and then and then he, he stops, and then the other yeah. guy goes. And they're all just laughing at him. I like, would. Oh, you're a dick, <laughs> dude. You're a dick. Yo, arrest him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that whole thing. What a fucking stupid assholes. Even the people that showed up. Like, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Um, what a waste of money. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, our wonderful, wonderful brothers over at the brand who, uh, once again this week, not a single tweet. Not one tweet. Not one. Not only not for our show, but for Unfiltered Marriage as well. Yeah, I love the support we get over there. Thanks, guys. Fit up. They fucking hate us. <laughs> oh, they don't boy. give a fuck. They hate us. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. No, this is. Yeah, it's not. This is normal. They're not gonna uh, listen to this. It's not consistent. It's not like they they go. They remember next week and go. Oh yeah, we got to put them out too. Yeah. You know. I, I demand Russo. To be, I demand Russo on the show. Well, <laughs> next week. <laughs> next week, SmackDown moves to Friday. Mr. Yeah. Vince Russo, your Tuesday fucking night is. Open. I demand. Why don't you bring fucking Vic Venom over here? We ain't fucking afraid of Vic Venom. You can bring him, bring Vince Russo, and why don't you bring that punk Jeff Lane too? Because I have a feeling he's in on this fucking non getting tweeted thing. So I would like to speak to him, and I'd like to speak to you or Vic Venom, whoever the fuck you want to invite over here. But either way, I demand to know why we constantly. Are on the fucking pay no mind list. Yeah, we want answers. Just, I want fucking want answers. answers. I demand answers. I fucking see the fucking sock tampon girl. She's got two fucking tweets. Who? The the uh, Goldie. I asked her to come on the show. I want to talk to her about the goddamn cheapskate thing okay. because that drives me insane. What happened? What the Goldie girl? Yeah, we nothing told happened. She was on that extreme cheapskate show. Were you not here when we talked about that? No. She goes in to uh, laundry mats and gets uh, lost socks and uses them for maxi pads. She really does that? That's what she it was on the show. Uh, huh. So I got to ask her about. She's pretty some good of this looking, stuff. ain't she? She's a blonde girl. I mean, she's not ugly, but she's From not like Tennessee or something. Tea. Yeah, I'm not a blonde guy. So what, Rich? What are you looking at? I'm gonna go into the laundry mat and use a tampon. Josh Anderson, I saw you guys all the time. Word, Josh Anderson. F and A, man. F and A. F and A, Cotton. F and A. Yeah, but you know, I look again and I'm like, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. Well, now that this uh, Tuesday thing opens up, you think our numbers gonna go are gonna change or what? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, but you know, you never know. But yeah. Uh, we don't have to fight with uh, SmackDown anymore. Yeah, because I'm sure that's what's keeping us back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're it's, part, it's part of the war. Yeah. yeah it's it, a, it, us, uh, AEW, and, uh, and, 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 yeah. and fucking it, it, WWE. It's not because we, we, have, we have a Twitter that Richie refuses to look into about why it's suspended. Yeah. I'm getting there, though. Yeah, I can't get on it. There. I can't get on it. Russo, Russo, it's a work. Russo suspended. I yeah. got it suspended. <laughs> it's, a, it's a work. It's a fucking work. It's unfucking believable though. You hear us, Brand? We're talking to you. Somebody's listening. Somebody's listening over there. I know you guys are waiting for us to mess up. I'm waiting. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Nope. Not over here, my there's, friend. There's no chink in the armor on this. There's suit. no chinks in the armor over here, my friend. <laughs> what does that None. mean? <laughs> then we wear armor and it's oh. flawless. Yeah. What do you think it means? I don't know. Yeah, there ain't no chinks in this armor. None. What does that mean? It's 
What do you mean? I don't know. You, know, you guys see this dumb little girl from Sweden, yeah, Greta Thunberg? I don't get that. No, let me see. It's, uh, well, you could pull it Her up. Her parents feed her shit, and she, and she goes on Wait, session. Is that what that, that girl? She's an Antifa oh, chick. Um, and, uh, uh, what's her name? Quifa? Greta. Uh. Greta. Nice name, by the way. That's yeah, a, that's I'm going to pick a on this name. girl. Greta what? Fleet? Thunberg, T T H U N B E R G. She's this climate control girl that came out all over the news today. Another one of these fucking dumb David Hogg type kids. Oh, gonna Greta see- Thunberg. Okay, what about mm. this? Oh my God, she looks nasty. She's like oh, twelve, she's- dude. I I came here. I should be in school right now. You're robbing me of. Shut up. What is she? Shut up. She's talking about climate change. Okay. Okay, like Louis said, no one wants to hear from you, kid. Yeah. You don't know about life. You don't even know about... I don't care what this kid thinks she knows about climate change. She doesn't know a fucking thing. Well, she knows what her parents fed her. Exactly. It's, it's the left people and the climate change people who trot out children as a fucking tool yeah. to, for, to, for, to for make, sympathy and make, make people, people feel, feel bad. Yeah, I don't feel bad. The Nazis used the same thing, by the way. They did? Yeah. And also... Let's talk about this fucking generation, okay? The generation of I leave my TV on. The generation of we all have fucking cell phones. The generation of I have to be driven everywhere. I can't walk anywhere or ride a bike. The generation of I don't go outside. The generation of I run my PlayStation 24 fucking 7. The generation of I can't fucking live without the internet. You suck up so much goddamn energy, you fucking generation. You're the fucking problem. And you want to sit here and preach to fucking us? People who probably walk to school half the fucking time. Or fucking rode our bikes every fucking where. Like, get the fuck out of here. We didn't have this bullshit. Nothing. We have it now. Yeah. They have it really hard. But these kids can't live I feel bad for these kids. Yeah, no, they have no, it they, hard. They have... They really have hard. They, they, without this, they're nothing. Their energy use... As far as electricity goes, this generation is fun out fucking out of this world. It's out of this fucking world, the amount of energy these kids use because they got to plug everything in and charge it. Do you ever see any other kid doing anything but using their shit on like their phone and shit? That's all I see kids doing. It's either that or you're an athlete. Occasionally, I'll see a fucking kid ride a bicycle. Yeah, it's either that or you're an athlete. Smoking a butt. I want to see. <clears throat> but, oh, this little girl is nasty and angry, too. She, she gave Donald Trump the fucking she's fuck, death What is she, fucking 13? Oh, 16. I want to, I want to, oh. Wait, she's talking about Donald Yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. Oh, God, I can't People stand the voice already. Pause this. Pause this. Entire Pause. Ecosystems. What is this, Camelot? First, first of all, what people are dying from climate change I'm from climate change um that i, I would like to know and well, is it uh, is, is it a lot s- of people like if it's a handful of people from a hot day that doesn't count yeah like what well, what where is this this genocide type of of, of mass dyings from climate change going on that i'd like to Wait. know and people will go well tsunamis and and hurricanes are acts of climate change. no no that that's that, that doesn't count because yeah, those happen this, all the time anyway Trump's fault? Everything's We're Trump's collapsing. fault. We are in the beginning of a face. mass extinction. A mass extinction. Look how over Again, pause that because I want to talk about that word and how, how they try to scare you. A oh, yeah. mass extinction. Everyone's going to die. Yeah. We're all going to die. Awesome. If, if because of whatever this little girl is talking about. Yeah. I, I'm going to put all my... Uh, all my all my eggs in a basket of a 16-year-old. That's probably yep. a dick with a life. She knows. Mommy, she knows. How dare you? Oh, how dare you? Oh, you can cut her off. Now, that's no, it. I hate you. Hey, on, I hate go. your voice. No, we're not going to listen to this whole thing. No, I, I don't. I just want Governor? Does uh, she say governor? more than 30 years. She doesn't talk about Trump. Science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away? This is... This is <laughs> you're here saying that you're doing enough. When the politics and solutions need oh, she also The overdramatics are yeah, incredible. It's fucking she's an actor. Bad, dude. She's an actor. The overdramatics yeah. are crazy. Yeah. Um, also, this little girl got there by sailboat. She refused to fly a plane. No. Well, why would you refuse? Other people are on the plane, stupid. It Just get on. It's going anyway. Whether you get on the plane or not, it's still going. Yeah. So why would you inconvenience yourself and not go? The water is... The water... could say about how she didn't... Take it. Yeah, she's got no ride back. The boat that took her is already back to France. The water's quite delightful. <laughs> huh. 
just she's an illegal immigrant. Trump should throw her out. Yeah, she definitely. <laughs> Jesus, you know get her off. Oh this God. is what when I hear her talk. This is exactly what I feel like. But this is just audience. yeah, because you're a child. I don't care what you say. You're a child. I don't give a fuck what you have to say. You know why? Because it's not you saying it for one, yeah. and for two, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. No matter what it is. And uh, no, exactly. Like yeah, there's those prodigy kids that are super smart, but they're not smart in this way. They're smart in like man, I can work a computer and. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They should get a homeless dude from the street, like a kid that's like on a home, and tell him how to fucking how the world is. Besides this dude, this girl, this girl, she has nothing, knows nothing about anything. No, she's got. She she's probably has like a clueless. fucking luxurious fucking life. Right, Richie, send you the other. Put up the other clip I sent you today, because this one. Let some oh, fucking like homeless boy. kid that can't. Is this one fucking infuriating? What we're about Her to watch. Voice makes me nauseous. Is um. No offense. There's a clip of a meeting of, I guess, socialites. And during the meeting, people will stand up and go, I have a point of contention. Uh, probably the last one I sent you. World Star or this YouTube? Not World Star, YouTube. The World Star one's good. We got to do that one, too. So. Right. If we want to defeat Cap. Now, like I said, this is a meeting of like socialists and social justice warrior pussy type of people. This is not her, right? No, this is something different now. We're, we're staying in the same ballpark, kind of, but now we're moving over to, to these fucking pussies. Watch, during the meeting, people will stand up and go, uh, I have a point of contention. Um, if everyone can stop being fidgety and talking, I, I have a hard time paying attention, so I would appreciate... And then another guy stands up, and you're going to see this, and he goes, uh, because the first guy said, guys, could you guys? And he goes, I have a point of contention! I would like it if gender terms were not uh, used. Blah, blah, blah. Don't these dudes have jobs or I women have I jobs? Hear this. I want to hear this. You wait. Uh, fuck. Oh my, God. oh, my God. Please, let me play this. Yeah, go ahead. I'm waiting oh, for no, you. Well, dude. Capitalism, we are going to need a party that will organize working people to fight for the demands that we want and to win You see all the hands, going up, see all the hands going up? Thank you so much. I need to talk. Right, right uh, quick point of privilege. Pause it, pause it. Quick point um, of personal privilege. Yes. Um, guys, uh, no. first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he hit. I don't want to talk. I was saying that's what they're saying. Like, oh, I thought you had no, no, no. Oh, let me hear the fuck yeah, thing. go. All right, bring it back. Sorry. I love these annoying assholes. Yes. Um, guys, a point of privilege. Uh, Pause it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> he says, um, I have a quick point of privilege because it's my privilege and my right <sighs> to say whatever bullshit is about to. I've come up with something. This is how we win with these people. I figured it out. We beat them at their own game. Okay. I'm offended at what pussies you are. I was raised in a generation where men were men, and not everything was taken literal, and you were allowed to joke around and have fun. And I'm offended by what pussies you have become. So please respect my wishes to still do things that might offend you, that might piss you off. That you might not agree with. And if you don't, you're going against my beliefs and, and my privilege, apparently. So I think that's how we need to beat these people. This world's uh, doomed, dude. I'm telling you. Uh, can I, fucking can I people. Play this? Please. James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I just want to say, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? I'm one of the people who's very, very prone to sensory overload. There's a lot oh, of chatter going on. It's making God. it very difficult for me to focus. Plus, please, can we just... I know it's we're all fresh. I would be fucking go, dying in that place. The to a probably go, Plus, suck a dick, dude. Focus, it's it's I wish... my ability to focus. Yes. Yo, you're I, a I douche, man. I had accidentally walked into this me room. Because I would just sit like in the corner with my mouth covered and be like... Shut up, asshole! Oh, you find him in the you bathroom know? and be like, dude, what is your deal? Quit being such a pussy! Who organized this social <laughs> this, convention? These fucking this is the the Antifas, the SJWs. This is their meetings. Oh my god, okay, let me stop. And they call each other Thank comrades. You, comrade. <laughs> comrade. Is there a speaker against name, point chapter, pronoun? Privilege. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to... To address everyone. Pause that. That dude's never got a piece of ass no, in his life. No, he's there ever. thinking he, this might get him some pussy. Yeah. That guy I'm right getting, there is 500 pounds. I, yep. I don't need to see him. I know he is. Bet you can hear about you definitely. He's, I was going to say the yeah, same thing. He's 500 pounds, and you can hear, like, he was waiting to find something. 
He's 38. That, but I bet you that's his thing. Like, he always yeah. waits for yeah. somebody to say guy or... No, no. Or, there's, or, hey, there's yeah. ladies here. Yeah. I bet like you this, that's like, his yeah. fucking uh, thing. Yes. He's 38. Uh, I'm, I'm, excuse me. Um, I'm, please refrain from using gender language. He lives in his mom's basement, oh, 38, and she still cooks for him. The guy don't even know. He probably just plays fucking... What a bunch of fucking cunts. Wait, I'm, I'm trying to find the point where he says, listen, guys... You put that back on, and it was kind of great. Sacramento just play the whole thing again. Bring I, it all the way back. Can... If we want to defeat capitalism, we are going to need a party that will organize working people to fight for the demands that we want and to win socialism. Thank you so much. Right, right uh, quick outside. point of privilege. Quick point um, of personal privilege. Yes. Um, guys, uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I just want to say, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? I'm one of the people who's very, very prone to sensory overload. There's a lot of whispering and chatter going on. It's making it very difficult for me to focus. Please, can we just, I know it's, we're all fresh and ready to go, but can we please just keep the what chatter to a, a minimum? What a bunch of fucking focus. asshole. Well, I, dude, if this is my class. Okay, is there a speaker against name, point chapter, pronoun? Privilege. Point of personal privilege. <laughs> yes. Please do not use gendered language to <laughs> to address everyone. He was fucking choking on a sausage trying to get that sentence out. Fuck out of here. Who Did are it? these people? Where do they come from? They are the that worst. The worst. They are horrible. The personal privilege. Personal. Comrade. Comrade. What is personal privilege? Like I need, like he could talk. Like it's his, it's his oh, right my, to talk. Yeah, it's their right. That's oh that's what they're my saying. God. It's my right. Where do these people come dude, from? Dude, if you were in a class, if you look, think about it, if you were seventeen years old and we're in a, we're in, we're, not, we're in our math punching. class, dude, and someone doing that, we we the guy would be like, shut the fuck down. Yeah, shut up, asshole. Yeah, yeah. Little no, sit down. he wouldn't. You know why? Because back then they knew better to to not do something like that. Because yeah. you'd get fucking your ass. This is why you need bullies, dude. Seriously. That's Not to be a dick, but that's some bullshit, bro. No, but you like, do. All those things are like an ecosystem, yeah, okay? Yeah. And you need the shark. Yeah. You need the shark. You, you gotta, need the algae, and you need the shark. And I'm not promoting bullying, but I'm saying like. Neither am I, but really. But we all, every every civilization grew up with bullies and bullying, and like we all dealt with it, and it makes people better for the most part because they strive to be better than that piece of shit who was bullying. Like them. Rich, so you're in a class, you stand, just stand up, just stand up, and be like, dude, shut the fuck up. The kid's not going to say it again. Yeah. But what <laughs> a bunch of fucking little cunts. That's crazy. Um, excuse me, excuse me, point of personal privilege, my vagina's leaking, and no, this... no one's offering me a tampon. Bro, it's, but it's, uh, this whole, it's the whole world's like this, though. Like, even, I mean, you can go into, like, a million things of how everybody's Where so... Did, why do they think that's right? But it's all right, know. but it goes like, even with the cop shit. You don't want to get the people just but, fucking throwing water on cops is, like, okay. But that's my point, though. They have like, a privilege to do whatever they want, they everybody. They sit there and do that shit, so if I was to go, well, I'm offended by you yeah. and how pussy you are. That's offensive to me. Because we were, I was raised by real men. World War II veterans were my grand, my grandfather. Is there any women? Was our in grandparents? There? Like, is there any girls in there that like you can get going through it again? Talk because you just think like, who fucks these girls? Who the, fucks the guys? I don't know. Nobody. That's the bigger question. The guys fuck the guys. No, the somebody guys suck their the own guys. dicks. No, but you know what it is. When you're in a situation like that, they're all fucking bitches, the guys. So yeah. they, they find a girl, and then that girl molds them into what they want their man to be, and yeah. that's his life. Yes. He just becomes his little puppy dog for whatever fucking girl accepts him. That's like like in the guy, like you're in South somewhere, and the guy, some guy like disrespects your girl, and he's just standing there, and the girl's talking. Yeah. She's the one. And you're like. Bah, 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 bah. Well, yeah. You're like, uh, <laughs> dude, do you, have a pet, do you have a dick? Oh, you can't say that. Yeah, no, I just, I can't fucking, I, I saw great that clip, man. I saw that video. I could, I could watch that all day yeah. and laugh. Yeah. Those, just think if you were yeah, not, yeah. because no. that meeting's going nowhere. Everyone's going to stand up with Yo, a personal just point the, of privilege. Honestly, yeah. think if they had that in the auditorium, like North, and you're like with your friends, and you have to watch oh, that Oh, it thing. would be sit down. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you please? Shut up. I'd be fucking yeah. like, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, there would be no mercy. You'd be ridiculed for the fucking remainder. If you did that in ninth grade, day one at a fucking like auditorium meeting, the next four years of your life are hell. Yeah. Like you, you are going to live in hell now. Like, so now but, this is what like, yeah. a, like go back, like think about like your dad exactly. doing. Like think yeah. about this is going to be somebody's fucking dad. Like if your dad started saying that somewhere, you'd be like, oh, but what John, a weirdo. Mm -hmm. But John, you see, <laughs> but, but now, and now do you see why I look at our children and I go, they're going to have it so fucking easy. 
Yeah. Because they're going to walk all over these fucking kids. Yes. Yeah. They are going to fucking barrel through them because they're us. Yeah. They're, they're a little bit of them. I'm not yeah. going to get it twisted. They are a little bit of them. Yeah. But we're putting an edge back in our kids of a little hardening them. Yeah. And it's okay to get yelled at and cursed at. And, you know, like, I, I, I when mm. I yell at my kids, I yell at you them. You can't say nothing. Like, when you were a kid and you would say, like, uh, like just say, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I can't even get into it. <laughs> Oh, buddy, we really weren't taking calls tonight, but uh. Hold on, let me try and get them on here. Yeah, yeah let, let's make it quick, Earl. Okay, who the fuck are these motherfucking assholes think they are thinking that they they're going to defeat capitalism? Oh, we're entitled to this. We're entitled to your savings. You're entitled to everything that's out there. No, you want something, you fucking work for it. You want something, do your job right, and you get a help you get a pay raise. What I job? They clearly don't have jobs. Those any of those yeah, fuckers. No. They're just sitting there like. Sitting there on their high dildos, you know, uh, thinking of ways they can make everybody must get something because we didn't have nothing when we were kids. Bullshit. You but a, Earl, you last, Earl, Earl, you think they're all sitting on dildos in that auditorium? I wish I was. They are a bunch. Of, they, they're most likely, yeah, they're a bunch of dildos themselves. They are Fuck a bunch it. of dildos. I agree with that. Yeah, no, no. I went to the last six years in Michigan. I didn't have a car. I didn't have life insurance. I just had a minimum wage job. You don't see me bitching about it. I made the best with what I had, you know, what the fuck. You That's know? what I'm saying. Like, have like somebody like I'm not saying you, but like have somebody like is like has nothing fucking talk. That girl that even that fucking girl, she could talk. She has probably everything. Gonna tell you, but fuck out of here. She can't survive because in somebody's fucking. She probably, she probably grew up in an entitled neighborhood, an entitled house, and figure this is how it's supposed to be. So everybody else should be entitled to everything else, you know. It's the parents' fault. How do they get ready for like the real life situation in the real world? Like they don't. They kids at some ready. point when no, you have don't. nobody. Ready? Check this out, Anna. Perfect example. Anna's been instilled her work etiquette from me and Jessica. Okay. Anna started working at Dunkin' Donuts. Within the first three months, they started training her to be a manager. While there was people there who have worked there for much yeah. longer than her. Because she went in there, she shows up on time, she shows up yeah. early. We told her, when you have a job, if you start at 8, being there at 8 is not on time. Being there at 7.50 is on time. Yeah. Okay? And Anna's a hard fucking worker. Like, uh, she's a little dim-witted sometimes. I love my daughter. She could be a little dim-witted, but when it comes to school, work, she doesn't fuck around. Like, and... It, as long as those two things are going good, I don't really break her balls about anything else because that's, yeah, that's, what that's you your main focus. Yeah. And she's always on work on time. She'll go into work sick. She did it today. She did it yesterday. She'll go into work sick. You yeah, know, well, that, like she's a, she, she, that's the way I am too. I don't call in sick. No, me either. Ever. I, I, I fucking go in. I deal with it. Unless I'm, like, I'm like flu throwing up shitting, then yeah. yeah, I'll call in. If I have a cold, I'm going in. They actually ask me to take off because I don't take off. I'm yeah. the same way. I'm like I never I that's the way I was always I was brought up like just go well, no you, matter what you you'd take show. care of your responsibilities and and again she does she pays her own phone bill she pays her car payment she pays her insurance well we pay her phone bill during school but she pays her own insurance and her own car payment right now all right so mm -hmm. and she takes it she's never late on nothing she's always good the kids today I, 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 wouldn't I, I, even I and, and she does this all on her own, by the way. I don't pay no her what. bills for her. She pays all her own bills. She does everything on her own. Kids today, I bet you wouldn't even know how to pay their cell phone no, bill. I, no, yo, you you would like like you can't even if you own something and hire like a twenty year old, you couldn't even hire they like they. It's they're totally up. Yeah, they're worthless. You no, know, the, uh, like for calling instance, for I, every fucking I, thing. I work with with uh, some younger kids now. The younger kids that around me now, when at, at their age, they um, you know like they don't even have a car on the road. Like I was, I, I own my own business at Dude, when you hit sixteen, at right? Ni at nineteen, I own my own business. My friends were fucking working full time. These these half of these guys don't even have fucking jobs. But answer me this, right? I'm sure this is the same answer for all of us because this is what we did. You turned sixteen, immediately got your permit, got your juniors, right? Of course, yeah. By the time you were 17, you had your car ready to go. Awesome. Right, ready right? to rock and roll. Yeah, it was. Me too. And it was waiting as soon as Mike me. flipped over the license, there was my car. I had it ready to go. Waiting for you. Yep. Waiting for me. Kid, they, again, these kids today, they don't even care about driving. No, they don't give a fuck. They don't even They're care. Cause they, no, they, but because they don't have to go anywhere either. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. Most of the thing they have They're is They're too busy on their computers. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's... 
It's fucking nuts. And then they sit there and judge everyone else. That's what. That's the problem. Like oh, these kids sit here and then want to judge everything else as if, for one, you know how the world works because you you have zero fucking idea how the world works. Because most of them kids yeah, also don't. they think that they're gonna get famous off some fucking internet post, so they they live life like, oh, it's no big deal. I got the world in front of me. I'm gonna fucking become rich off the internet. Yeah, they have no idea. I was talking to some dude today, and he's like, now, here's something else I need to bring up. And this rotates to something I uh, posted on Twitter or retweeted. It's nowadays that you see a uh, crime being committed, someone getting beat up. No. Yeah. The kids today, they rather they'll oh, they all watch. film Dude. it and post. They rather yeah, film it, post here. it on yeah, Twitter bro. or it's 50 kids filming. And, and, and Not kid. one person called the cops and some dude yeah. got stabbed, right? Stabbed. Yeah, there was another yeah. 50, like you said, 50 yeah. were all oh, videotaping. Yeah, when they were trying to take his phone from him. So, yeah, ocean yeah, yeah I saw that one too, an old guy. So, uh, approval, it seems more important than actually helping someone, yo, that's getting their ass beat. Yeah, yeah. All right, Earl, brother, we're going to let you go, though, because we wanted to all try right. to keep this one uh, okay, call the list. Go. All right, we love you, okay. buddy. Love you too, guys. Yeah, right. Have a good night, bro. All right, all right you too. But, yeah, that's just I, sickening, dude. Like everything has to be on video. Like, like you gotta. No one does anything. They just video. No yeah, one right, tries talk, to help. Let's, let's talk about something upbeat. I feel like we've been fucking Debbie Downers this whole fucking show. Yeah. Fuck some. All right. I fucking saw Rambo. It was fucking awesome. Now we have another Rotten Tomato situation here, where I'm gonna look it up right now. I don't know where the scores are at now, but last I checked, the reviewer score was in like the 30s, the low 30s, and the user score was at like 85 percent. Okay, so now what? Is, what is the complaint that these people, ha- the reviewers, uh, a have? lot of reviewers were saying in today's society, it's it's disgusting that you know Rambo's killing Mexicans and. <sighs> Yada yada yeah. yada. Who is he supposed to be killing? He was going after a Mexican drug. Uh, but they cartel. had they had no problem when it was Indonesians. They yeah. had no problem. Yeah, no, yeah. Like get the fuck out of here. It's just a movie, yeah. and it's fucking Rambo, no less. Yeah. Like, what would he be doing with the Mexicans? Having tea uh, with yeah. them? Yeah. We're at 28. Giving them jobs. Ready? They this is, this is why Rotten Tomatoes. Not Rotten Tomatoes. Don't You can't blame Rotten Tomatoes for this unless they handpick their reviewers. Okay. If they handpick their reviewers, then yes, you can blame them. I don't know if they do that. But you have a 28% critic score, 84% viewer score yeah that's a huge difference it's a gigantic difference yeah now the the people the audience is going oh we're coming to see a rambo movie and the fucking reviewers are saying oh there's no fucking point to this movie it's just killing this isn't citizen kane what do you expect when you go see a rambo movie exactly they're looking for a plot like what plot are you looking for what characters building are you looking for the characters built it's the fifth movie all right and everyone else is a side character. The main p- point of, of focus in a Rambo movie this is him and his knife. Is Rambo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, call me crazy, but it's like Terminator. What do you expect from Terminator? A killing. Yeah. Right. No, Terminator is a little smarter, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's more. a little bit more. You know, Terminator is a little smarter. But Rambo, but you Rambo, going in there? You know, he's but action. To, fucking. The first Rambo was a smart like film. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then after that, they went off the rails from part two on. Like it wasn't even like they went like the Rocky two route where no. it was like no, this Luke, was still serious right here. Into it. Yeah, they just went full on. We're going crazy action. Yeah, but ro- the Rocky thing in that, you know, it's like total apples no, and oranges. No, but what I'm you, saying I is, know, I know, Rocky I jumped the shark in Rocky three. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Like it, it, it kind of like flipped over where now it's like kind of goofy and silly and you know still good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not putting down any of these things. I enjoy all of them. Mm. But, you know, if we're being honest with ourselves, three, four, five are poor quality films. Let's be honest. Of what? Rocky. Which one was five again? I love them, and I think they're great movies. But to an outsider, Richie, if oh, you were to go, five, right. hey, we're going to skip one and two. We're going to go right to Rocky three, dude. Yeah. And you show that to someone today, like a 16-year-old. He'd probably be like, dude, what, are you, what is this? Yeah, but I honestly you know think if I mean? you watch any of those movies and at, at a kid now, they'd no, be like, one eh. or two, one or two. I, yeah. I don't know, because Rockies are so beloved. It's hard to say, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it. It is hard to say how anyone will take them, because you just fall in love with the character himself. I, I, yeah. I, I don't even know if it's about the movies. It's about just... You mean you fell in love with the character? <laughs> no, but with all the characters oh. in the movies, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but... I don't know. That that might have been a poor example to use. But Rambo was fucking awesome. What what movie do you consider like a great like the Rambo you'll say 
a great action movie from like the eighties, whatever. What do you actually Predator? Now, like now, oh, did you, now you watched um Hobson Hobson um oh, it was god awful. No, uh, with Hobson and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. I don't even want to talk about talk. it. It's bad. I can't. I don't. He, it was just how, another fast. And he's style not movie. in good. He's it. not a good actor, dude. Hold on, time out, time out. I have a, qu- a couple questions. All right, you're there for the action. Was the action there? You're not there for a plot. I know, let's, no, no. Yeah, but then why is it two and a half hours? Jesus. If I'm not there for a plot, why is it two and a half hours? They had to show the rock without a shirt on for like three hours. In there. Okay, but okay. that's what I'm saying. So it's not a straight up action right, so movie where I'm getting fucking action. The, how the, was the action? It was cool, I guess, for Fast and Furious, but I don't like that type of action where it's all CGI action. Yeah. Everything is CGI. Was anybody else from Fast and Furious in that movie? I don't know. No. I don't remember, dude. I was in my phone half the time. Really? Like, yeah, because I just did, didn't, wasn't, we just put it on. I was like, fuck it, there's a clear how copy. How you did be disrespectful to that? All right, let's get back to, the, you're disrespecting Rambo as I'm trying to talk about Rambo. So okay. how dare you disrespect Rambo? <laughs> so the movie, again, the fucking veiled plot, his niece, daughter, I don't even know what the fuck she is. She's not his daughter, but he takes care of this little girl. She goes to Mexico to find a father. She gets stolen. and uh, Sex trade? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he goes there to get her. He, the cartel beats him up, and they beat him within an inch of his life. You know what I mean? But they let him go. Uh... Which, you know, you look at that and you go, oh. They let him go. Yeah, that, that's, that's the worst mistake of your life, my yeah. friend. You, you yeah. don't know what you've just uh, done. Then he goes, I'm going to kill everyone. That's well, he says. tells the one guy, he goes, you ripped my heart out. So I'm going to do that to you. Really? And he literally rips a fucking man's heart yeah. out of his chest, Richie. <laughs> he cuts a dude's head off and throws it like on the road. He rips a fucking guy's heart out of his chest, and the beating sound is still there no. as if it would still be beating. I, I, oh I heard that music. knife. That I heard he just uh, he used that knife through the whole movie. Well, Non-stop. no, not the whole movie. Well, I'm saying like... That's amazing. It, the, the whole like, good part of it is the last like probably 25, 25 minutes, half hour. Mm. you know, And the rest of it is it is a little bit of a story building, you know, but whatever you you can't just Rambo always crescendos at the end. It's always uh, you know it's always a, a, a grand finale. Was he the old Rambo. guy in that movie? No, it was just Rambo, the only white guy in the movie. Uh, people again, the critics were so mad because he was killing Mexicans and with all the stuff going on, you know, that that was their that was their way to shit on this movie. But I'm like, how do you go into Rambo expecting anything other than shit blowing up and him killing people and? And get mad that that's not what you got because that's th- that's how you should be reviewing that movie. You shouldn't be reviewing it against everything yeah, else. Yeah, like what yeah. race? You should be reviewing it as a Rambo what movie. The fuck? Yeah, how many people did he kill? Did he yeah. kill him in good fashion, dude? And this movie is gorier than a horror movie. Yeah, that's what I heard. Really? Fucking the kills in this. Yeah. He's got. He's like Kevin McAllister in this uh, one uh, because he's got this underground tunnel system. Yeah, he built yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He built but it because they were he trapped in the Cumberland. They don't tell you why he's building yeah, 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 this. Because he knew they were cut. Co- yeah, but you, you knew they were going to chase him down the No, Cumberland. but he was building that even before then. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, I'm he, just he was bored. building this in the beginning of the thing. Exactly. Bored. That's pretty much why he was doing it, oh. I guess. Oh, my God. He was building this whole tunnel system underneath this farm he lived in. Just because. But uh, so the girl gets taken. He gets beat up. He does go back and get the girl, but she dies on the way back. What? Yeah, the girl doesn't live. So she dies on the way back, and now the cartel is looking for them, and they had his wallet from him, and they beat him up, so they know where he's at. Yeah. So he knows they know. He starts setting everything up. Like I said, Home Alone style, man. He's oh, setting up booby no. traps and shit. And, I mean, there was some of them you're just like, fucking yes. There was people cheering in the theater, Richie, oh when God. people were getting killed. They were like, yeah, fucking yes. Yes. You know, laughing at some parts, you know, yeah. but fucking so good. So good. And, by the way, the debate is over. I've realized they're two completely different animals. John Wick wouldn't last five seconds in Rambo's Ever. World. Really? No way. Not in Rambo's world, Why? no. Not even at his house. <laughs> because John Wick is on the spot, Johnny. Okay? Rambo's methodical. Rambo takes his time. Rambo's a fucking... He's playing chess, you know what I mean? Everyone else is playing checkers. He... he He's very sm- remember in the original Rambo, all the booby traps he set up and dude, yeah, he set know. up his house for no reason. Wick you know. would, so on. you think of that aspect, and he's got bow staffs, bow and arrow skills. <laughs> yeah, he does have bow and arrow. He's got he's bow nasty. and arrow skills. Yes, <laughs> he's nasty. really nasty. He's so. really good with a knife. He's so fast with the. You no, know I like arrow. when he carves shit. When you see him like sharpening the blade. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's when you know shit's about to go. Yeah, down. you get like chills. Nice, You're nice like, oh, fuck, this is going. Yeah. But if as a Rambo movie, fucking ten out of ten, go fucking see it. 
It was awesome. I fucking loved it. People got killed. Jess loved it. Anna went. Who Anna's only seen the last Rambo movie and now this one. The last Rambo movie she was all in for because she's a gore hound like me. So she's seen people getting fucked up like that. She's like, oh, I'm into this. So it was originally just me and Jess going to go see Rambo. And I get a call that day at work from Jess. And she's like, is there another ticket uh, next to our seats? Because Anna wants to go. I'm like, I look at the phone. I go, who wants to go? All hmm. right. That's my <laughs> daughter. Hmm. So she ended up going with us. And she loved it. Yeah. So... Yeah, Captain Spaulding. Listen, spoilers. It's like there's nothing to spoil. Dude, spoil. It's, a fucking it's ra- Rambo. It's Rambo, bro. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's the, gonna kill people. I sorry, you know. I told you the girl died. I mean, <laughs> oh no, it's really you know. It doesn't matter. Well, you knew bro. somebody was dying. If he's living, somebody's dying. Yeah, somebody's so. getting fucked up. That's all you. Should I mean, like. In the plot with him. And then Stallone put out a video uh, saying, thank you guys for everything. That is the last Rambo. It was kind of uh, left open-ended, like if he died or not. But, I mean, yeah. you know, you could take it for, uh, I guess that's the poetic moment of uh, Rambo. How did you... Uh, how did you perceive it? Yeah, how did you perceive the ending? Did he, cho- did he get choked up at the end? No. No, I did not. Hmm. I did He not. left on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to fucking kill people. Yeah. Uh, ready to kill a Mexican. <laughs> but yeah, Rambo. He waited in line at Walmart to get a fucking bow. <laughs> I got my tickets for the Joker this week. I'm going next Thursday, so I'll have a nice. full review on that. Yeah. Uh, oh, this happened today. So, you know, I reach out to people, try to get them on the show. Yeah. So I reach out to Perry Caravello. Okay. Windy City Heat. Yeah. Who was that? The, you don't know it. I don't think you've ever seen Windy City Heat. I'm not being a dick. No, no, I'm not, I don't care. It. I'm saying, you know. Um, he's a nobody. And that's the point of this whole thing. Windy City Heat, if you guys don't know this movie, it was a movie that these uh, really two guys made to fuck with this one other guy. The whole movie's a prank on this one guy, Perry. And after speaking with Perry and whoever Perry's guy was, he deserves everything he gets. Everything he gets. Why? And, and then so Because like, immediately, like, like, I'm being nice and shit. Like, I'm ready? I'll read the conversations here with Perry first. Um... Where are we? Okay, so he writes, I write, hey, dude, you know, big fans of Windy City Heat, any chance I can get you on my podcast? He goes, how much are you going to pay me for, pay me, for me to do your podcast? It's time to blow me. It's time to well, blow me. Well, first of all, well, let's see how much he wants. You know what I mean? Like, if it's 100 bucks, I'm willing to pay 100 bucks <laughs> to get this guy on. Okay. Can we got refunds um, if he sucks. So I write, what's the normal rate? We've never had guests. Um, we've never had to pay guests before. We've had on famous chefs, comedians, filmmakers, yada, yada, yada. No one's ever asked for money. He goes, I'm not no one. Oh, dude. Well, what? first of all, literally ah. everyone I've had on our show is more famous than you. Yeah. Literally every single person we've had on our show is more famous than yeah, you. Wait, let, wait. Let's no, nobody. What's his name? Perry Caravello. Does anybody in that chat nobody does. know who this fucking And the only people that would is. know it is if they heard me talk about Windy City Heat on the show before. Okay, so go on. So um, I go, I'm not trying to call him off shitty. It's just no one's ever asked to be paid. What do you normally charge? You know, I'm being, again, very respectful. Yeah. He goes, with me, you pay me like it's a radio show. I go, okay, so what is your rate? When you're right, when, uh, yeah, what is your rate? He goes, contact this guy. Oh, get out of here. So My I contact agent. that guy, and we'll get to him in a second. You know what? Let's go over to that guy now, because then I'll go back to Perry. So now I contact this guy, right? I go, I was told by Perry to reach out to you for his booking on a show. He goes, what show? I go, Super Ugly Show on Vince Russo's The Brand. He goes, never heard of it. Then he goes, anyway, it's a no, but thanks for asking. What? So I go, Perry said for a price, he would. You wouldn't be able to afford him. First of all, you don't know me, and you don't know what I can afford. Yeah. Second of all, like... What why, the fuck? Like, why would you come at your face like that? Yeah, you don't even know who the fuck you're talking to. Like, you're just being a fucking jerk off now for no fucking reason. So I wrote, I go, y- you don't know that. He goes, can you afford a thousand? They're just reaching, dude. He wanted a thousand for Perry. Okay. That's that's where I'm going. He wanted a thousand dollars. So I go, I can, but not for Perry. Thanks anyway. He goes, so I was right. Take care. I go, no, you weren't. <laughs> Same to you. He goes, I was actually. Now he's like bickering, back and bickering forth. with me. Yeah, he's trying to get the I right. was actually. I said you couldn't afford him, and that's true. I said, and, and then he goes, Ta. I go, it's not. Perry isn't worth a thousand for a podcast, dude. Sorry, but he's not. 
We had bigger names than him and for free. A thousand is steep for him. Good luck booking him at that price. So now back to Perry. Um, talk to Tom. I, uh, so I write to him. I go, he just gave me a flat no. Because at first he just gave me the no. Yeah. And then he goes, goodbye. If you both, I guess he meant bother me more, you'll be blocked. Whoa. So then I write, dude, I'm being very respectful. What's with the hostility? So then this is when I got the price back from the guy. So he didn't even get a chance to answer that part. So then I just write, $1,000? Are you nuts? I go, you can block me now. <laughs> but like, where the fuck do you get off, dude? Because he, because he wasn't getting, he don't get $1,000. Because no one fucking nobody. pays for the guy. But if you want to get any money, you're doing a podcast. We, I would have gave you 100 bucks to come on. I would have paid Perry to get him to talk about Windy City. What's he, the sense of paying a guy? What's the sense of even paid taking guest, on? ever, first yeah. of all. Like, th- th- when I saw that, I'm like, hey, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? But yeah. then I was like, at I mean, least let me entertain him. Because funny. I do love Windy City Heat that I would pay, you know, the hundred bucks to get him on and be able to talk about it. Now. now, fuck him. He's a, he deserved everything they did to him. And now I understand why those guys were such fucking dicks to him. And good. He's a fucking prick. Now you could just like go and whoever's in there that wants to fuck around and just fuck with his fucking Twitter. Uh, Bagel Boss Dykstra <laughs> backed out. Yeah. Uh, did you hear who's in? No. Who? Screech. He'll, he's gonna kill him. Oh, Screech is gonna fuck him yeah, up. Yeah, Screech is gonna fuck him up. Yeah, I know. I can't wait. Screech is tough. I would love to yeah. fight that dude. Just like, for, well, just well, f- like happy, yeah. fucking uh, ten bucks. Here we go. Ready to get mad? We love when Hollywood fucks with our movies. New Jack City being yeah, remade. I've seen that. I've seen that today. First of all, there's no crack, crack epidemic anymore. Second of all, New York's not the way it was. New York is not the New York it was when New Jack City was originally made. So how do you plan on doing this movie? You go to like uh, well, South Central. <laughs> Well, you're going to take yeah. it out of New York, so then it's not New Jack yeah. City. New York is and, yeah. and instead of yeah. crack, they the use heroin. The whole point of New Jack City is you take out the York part, New Jack City, New York City, get it? Yeah. Yeah. So you can't take it out of New York. So again, where do you, and, and what, there's not a real, like, I, I, from what I, I know, I mean, maybe heroin is a problem in the black community, but I don't think crack anymore is a problem in the black community, and I don't think heroin's a big enough problem to base a film off of it. So what is this movie going to be? Yeah, but they could still portray that it's still like that, though. D- then why remake it? That's what someone said that. They go, well, they could set it in the 80s. I go, then, then why remake it? Watch the one well, that was no, done I'm in saying, the well, 80s. No, they, they, they're going to redo it, but in today's yes, world... Yes, but no, then it's not believable. Everyone goes, that's not true, though. Now you're just making up... Of course up. it's not no, true. No, but you can't do that in today's world, because now you're making black people look bad for no reason. You can't do that, Richie. Yeah, you can. If, if a black person makes it, you can. Who's making it? Oh, Singleton's uh, I, I dead, ain't right. he? I guess Isn't right. Singleton so, dead? I don't know if Singleton didn't do New Jack City. Oh, I thought he did. He did Boys in the Hood. Yeah, that's even racist for saying that. Why? Because you automatically assume that he, he was did. No, but he makes good movies like that. I'm not offensive. Yeah. Well, I mean, movie. you know, Higher I'm not learning. saying I didn't even mean it as a joke. Higher Learning is the most ridiculous piece of film. I could have been like, oh, I didn't mean it as a joke. I can't believe how. I'm just messing with what you. else movie did that? Co- oh, uh, he did Higher Learning? He did. Uh, didn't he do um, Poetic Justice? I don't know. No, he didn't do Poetic Justice, did he? I don't know. I don't know. I gotta get home. I gotta bring home food. Let's wrap this up, baby. All right, let me see. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Oh. All right, guys, that's it. Um, again, this uh, this whole episode's dedicated in memory of uh, the great and uh, dear friend of ours and dear friend of Super Ugly Shows, Chef Carl Ruiz. We love you, buddy. Uh, you were gone, taken from us all too soon. Stand-up guy, one of a kind, and he will definitely be very, very missed. By a lot of fucking people. So, Carl, last one for you, buddy. Pinky up. Hashtag Ruiz and for life, my man. All right. Uh, that's it for us, guys. <sighs> what do I do? Uh, Russo'sBrand.com, 395 a month. Go over there. You know they don't tweet us out. Well, but that's why that's the, the extent of the promoting I'm going to do. I mean, Jesus. Um, Realm Network, StatementGames.com. Go to Statement Games, get all your prop betting in. Opie Radio, and God damn it, I don't know if the restaurant's still open, but if La Cubana is still open, go down there. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's in the Meatpacking District. I don't know if it's open or not, though. Um, yeah. Opie Radio Podcast. And uh, everyone go support Opie and uh, go send him some love. I'm sure he's going to need it. You know, of course, you get the assholes, too. I can't believe people. Like, even in this time, like, I see people commenting to him and still just being, like, fucking just complete, just shitty... And, and I'm like, what kind of fucking people are you? What do you mean? Like how? Like what? Like they just, I can't, like they sh- just shit on them because they took Anthony and Jimmy's side. Oh. So, you know, like they'll be like, you're surprised he died? Look at all the fucking food he ate. He drank. And, uh. I'm like, that's so fucked up. And, 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 and like even other like shit. Yeah, but I said the same that. thing, but I didn't like, you know, I, I didn't real. You, you think he does it for the show. He does it, you know. Yeah. The post. He loves food. Shit, so, fucking you know, honestly, just the guy's passed away. It's but, like, uh, you know, just throw shit like that at some money, man. All right, guys, that's it, buddy. We love you, Carl. Rest in peace. Yeah, man. Support Chef Carl Ruiz, aka the Cuban. We love you, buddy. And from all of us, it's Super Ugly Show. Condolences to the Ruiz family. Keep the hashtag alive. Yeah, Ruizing means you're living life to the best. So that's what it is. R U I Z I N G. Whenever you're living your best life, that's when you're ruizing. That's hashtag. So, hashtag. hashtag ruizing, and even if you, you know, you just throw it out there tonight a few times, get it out there, because Carl lived his life the way he wanted to. He lived a fucking great life, and he's gonna be, like I said, very, 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 very missed by a fucking whole lot of fucking people. So, that's it. Super ugly show. Signing out. We'll see you next Tuesday. This was deep.